This is where he is anonymous. Uh, welcome along. Uh, it is NRL round three of the season. And uh, just like every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. <laughs> every night. Has it dawn? Welcome along, boys. <laughs> My name is Jared Cronin. Let's bring in the fellas. Daniel Whatakura. He was at WOMAD this weekend, so he was uh, doing a bit of double dipping there. Bro, how was it? Oh, it was awesome, man. I was fucking pumped to hear some fucking international sounds while I was watching some fucking league on my phone. It was awesome. <laughs> watching it, dancing along, high five some, some bro behind me said, what's the score, bro? And I was like, we just scored 16, 12. And like, yeah. So, best of both of us, boys. <laughs> Did the crowd just start going ape at, like, you know, off moments of the music just to react to the, the tries and they're like, yeah. Musicians like yeah, yeah it's, all, it's, all in, it's all in harmony, bro. All in sync, just like our defensive line. <laughs> Sweet is, bro. I might get you to bring your uh, microphone a little bit closer to you um, as well, just to <laughs> get that crystal clear. Oh, there I am. Wo- coming wo- sound. <laughs> there we go. That's what we want the Womad sound. <laughs> no, good. What's got no, the sauce? Hey, bro, how are you? Uh, from uh, my little phone, but it was still just as exciting watching them play. So <laughs> didn't have access. Oh. Yeah, I don't have access Everyone to Wi-Fi, phoning so it this I watched week. it through 4G. <laughs> the, yeah, it doesn't cause cancer, by the way. But, uh, yeah, no, it's all good. Was it? No, no, it was great. Wasn't pixelated it was or anything? It's great. <laughs> Caught every bit of it. Sweet. You Isaac Sauce, how did you watch back. the game, bro? I, I watched it uh, off Sky Sport now, oh. so I had the creature comforts. Off terrestrial um, television. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, not, not, not terrestrial. Uh, stream. <laughs> <laughs> Who actually oh. <laughs> has Sky these days? Sorry, just killed another um, That's right. potential sponsor. But there you go. Sky oh, I'm going to bone to pick with app. Sky. Bone to pick with them. The app oh. uh, application needs some Ooh. needs some work. Needs some work out there now, people. It really does. Frank, it does. what's your beef about it? Oh, my Samsung app just decides that there's always multiple logins. It's like there's no one else logging in right now, bro. And it just shuts you down. So yeah. <laughs> No are you, sure, are you yeah. sure there's not multiple logins? No one's trying to <laughs> get your little sneaky Kenny logins on you, bro. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> uh, now, boys, uh, obviously, um, uh, even before we get into the game, awesome win. Yay. Uh, but also double awesome uh, on this episode, we're going to be chatting to an OG warrior. We're going to be chatting oh. to one of the, the originals, Hydro Okasene. So that's uh, that's pretty exciting as well. So uh, let's, let's ride the wave because uh, there's something going on. Uh, I've actually heard a, a great phrase today from none other than Greg Spence. Uh, he's called it the Webolution. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm in, I'm in for Ooh. this. So, children of the Webolution, Isaac, what were your thoughts on our game against the Cowboys? Yeesh, oh, it's just so good to watch. Eh? I mean, that the defense is on a whole other level, I reckon. And just some really weird stuff that I never really thought would have worked, worked. Like having Dylan Walker... <laughs> Jazz Tavanga, and then when Wade Egan went off, Bailey Sirenin, who's, you know, one of Buddha's faves, it just worked so seamlessly. I'm just like, I'm all in. Like, mm. I can buy into this style of play because it just seemed to work. And, you know, one of the kind of nerdy things I look at is fantasy um, and their players' points for a game to see their performance in the game. And it was all reflected in what I saw on on their um, player points. For example, Jazz Tavanga, Tavanga got through a ton of work. I think he ended up with 61 points in 40-something wow. minutes. Um, and Sean Johnson ended up with 54 points. Um, yeah, I know it's a little bit nerdy to do that sort of thing, but for me, it just sort of makes sense. So, mm. yeah, I'm all on board for their style of play. Yeah, they both definitely, uh, definitely played well, I think, even in just like, <laughs> traditional measures, uh, you know, the, the, the vibe. Uh, I'm not sure if we might have lost Daniel or not, but the old uh, the old Plymouth <laughs> internet there might be creaking a little bit. <laughs> yo, Moneta, yo. what did you think of our uh, our oh, Ford packs effort? Definitely, the definitely fantastic. I mean, it, it goes back to the comment I made like uh, last week, and the commentators actually alluded it to, to it too. That just they're just they're playing it as a pack, and then like really mo- the mobility and all that stuff, being able to pass, you know, to the edges and just kind of players the you know type five and around that so it's no nah, they were great and mitch barnett oh yeah you know playing that uh ball to you know to Mario martin on the side you know they've, they've got the offloads going they've got you know um 
and if Noah Blake, you know, he's tearing it up. And was it all three forwards like made over a hundred meters, you know, compared to the Cowboys where they mm. were able to stop. Was six? Was it six? I thought it was six. six. Players? Well, was it well, there six you go. Players? Six, six forwards play- over a hundred meters forwards? compared to the Cowboys. Well, maybe I got that wrong. That, well, that may include maybe Monty, perhaps, or maybe. Yeah, but three over two hundred forwards. Yeah, ever saw Tamalolo. Yeah, you know, to, I think he was only now place up to seventy meters. Yeah. And so, yeah, they, on on the defense, so defense and offense, yeah, going well, going well. And, uh, yeah. That was a that was a big name Cowboys pack, and we just man, we just took it to them and really just ran yeah, them yeah. around their own home ground, which is um, which is really nice. Um, uh, you mentioned the the passing down the left there. Got to say, man, um, Timide Martin. I don't know if he's like um, like one of those old Western gunslingers, but man, he's got quick hands, eh? Like. Yeah, the ball comes near him and he's just like, Phew. and the defenders and, are like, it's Sean Johnson. Like, Jeez, yeah, he looks like the Sean Johnson of an old. Well, Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. He's actually running and he's side like, wow, stepping. This is what it's like <laughs> to not play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't care if he's crabbing across the field because when he does that, everyone just stops, eh? Yeah. Yeah. He's it's like, so good to see. He's just loving being part of a, a team that's not trash. So, um, so that's great. <laughs> Um, now, uh, I'm tempted to ask a question to Daniel. Can you hear us, Daniel? Yeah, loud and clear. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> we would have just lost visual, but, uh, but that's okay. Uh, bro, uh, what were your um, thoughts on the, uh, well, the, the, the WOMAD uh, sort of intake of, of the game for you? Uh, I think, um, obviously, uh, start was not ideal, but they were a bit fortunate to get those those tries so it was a bit unlucky so they're just two kick tries so um one off the post ricocheted um it was a bit uh, lucky and then obviously the the bomb um i thought there was a knock on you anyway but um they bounced back really well from that the fours just dominated we just got uh, a pretty strong forward pack that starting to uh, make those meters starting to play together well um but the most pleasing thing was just they're continuing to um, take some take some chances out wide, score those tries, and then the next set was beautiful. You know, kicking on the mm. four, putting yep. them on their ten in the corner, and just getting back in the grind. Um, and that's not that's not something we've done before that well. Yeah, you, you did right. I was I was really like harping on during the game, probably chewing the wife's ear off a little bit, and just like, oh, that's such a great set after scoring points, you know. And yeah, so. Uh, I I hear you on that, bro. It's good to see your boy uh, Bailey get out there and do some damage as well. <laughs> it's just great. I think we've just got a good mm. rotation of boards uh, as well. I'm, I'm actually a, a bit – well, there's a lot of competition. So uh, Bunty only got 17-odd minutes, I think. He played the first stint. So, you know, I think with, with how Jazz played, Jazz was awesome. Uh, Jazz, Dylan Walker, AFB – uh, Isaac Soss, they've all got that uh, ball head to cut. <laughs> Part of the clan. The ball brothers. <laughs> the ball brothers. There's the batch yeah. brothers, there's the ball brothers. <laughs> but they just play with energy, defensive energy, attacking energy. So, yeah, it's going to be a hard, hard 17. Mm. Right? And that's what you want. You want competition for your 17. And it's uh, it's going to be a tough who, who misses out. But um, mm. nice problem for Webby to have. Absolutely. It gives us options, eh? I mean, we had uh, Curran playing... New South Wales Cup obviously wasn't quite quite right for top grade, uh, and also uh, my oh, yeah. man crush as well. Jesus, we still, uh, you know, God, in the wilderness Jesus. as well. So there's there's so you know there's good things. Like we've had a bad sort of run on our injuries. Hopefully, uh, Mitch Barnett sounds like he's doing okay. So that's that's something. Um, but man, another guy in that Ford pack, Isaac. Oh. You'd be loving the play of Wade Egan. How good has he been? Oh, top try scorer for the Warriors so far, isn't he? <laughs> oh, is it yes. Martello now? No, it's he's Wade Egan. He's been every game so far, I think, Wado. So Yeah, uh, yeah, because Marcelo scored two, and he's just scored one before. It doesn't matter. For Wade <laughs> Egan to be scoring a try every game, and the the try that he scored um, off some beautiful interplay between the forwards, Tohu Harris inside ball to AFB, running an outline, puts an offload back inside to Wade Egan. It's, you know... The, the try last week was that set play try was amazing, but just to see that interplay, you can expect to sort of see that almost every week, and that's what gets me excited. Mm. Um, like that set play last week, um, that Wade was this Wade scored off Sean Johnson's offload. 
Yep. That's yeah. Right. Like yep. that was awesome. That was amazing. But that's kind of, I don't want to say it's a one off, but you won't see that too often. But the interplay between the forwards is just meant. I mean, mm. that's just so good to see. Uh, and Wade Egan, like, you know, when we first started this <laughs> podcast, man, did we bag him. I mean, <laughs> me in particular, bagged him hard. And look where he is now. He's like first on the team sheet every week. Yeah, we'll get him on the podcast just to give you a grilling when he uh, when he comes off. I'll take um, it. I'll take it. <laughs> take it yeah. happily. Um, now, I actually, I, I was looking at the, um, I was looking back at that set piece try from last week. You know, where Egan scored, and I was just marveling at how Tohu was the first receiver, and he just sold it like a NFL kind of play action, like he was going that way, and then just bang, sent it back, and then Bing, 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 we scored. So I was like, oh, that's that's beautiful. But Moneta. What I'm also liking is the fact that a lot of our play mm. is it's off script. We're not uh, we're not running, you know, um, you know, second man kind of plays or shifts or whatnot. So it's harder for these guys to defend because they're not really sure what we're going to do. Um, how do yeah, you see I that think, aspect of our? I attack? think the first three tackles we always lay it up, like we we keep it simple. And I remember when Lusick um, was we were interviewing him, he was saying we just keep to our lanes and keep to our roles. So I think when it gets to the latter of the, um, you know, the tackle set, you get to play a bit more of that, um, you know, free spirited football and so forth. But like, yeah, no, nah, we're definitely, you know, offloading way more. We're definitely having a bit more razzle dazzle, which I haven't seen in a long time. But at the same time, we're also quite structured in a way where we, where we end our sets um, to what Daniel said. We, we pimp a lot of our kicks that Sean Johnson was aiming you know, the bombers was, you know, around that zero to 10 minute and we're just camping them in the corner. And it was just like, we were just contemplating continuous pressure. So that's something I haven't seen from the Warriors in a very, very long time. And just to see that, it's like, and like, even when we lost last week, I actually was still quite happy with just the way they played. It was just the fatigue at the end. But like, like I said, it's all looking really promising under the, uh, what is it? Weapomania? Is it? <laughs> WrestleMania. 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 What was it? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Webolution. 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 Look here, brother. You got this so wrong. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, really Greg Spence. <laughs> it's like, that's so much better. I want Weber I think I, I, think I like uh, Weber Mania. Weber Mania. <laughs> Weber Mania. <laughs> Followed by SummerSlam. <laughs> He's got the chair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's got the chair. <laughs> uh, um, now, put a, um, uh, up, up front again. Oh, um, he's great. Tohu, our fearless leader, a.k.a. the last samurai. Um Game 200, another solid shift from him. And how good was it to see him like at, at the uh, the after match function, and he just didn't look like he was, uh, you know, weighed down by a terrible team and all of its fans. <laughs> there, was it? how, how good was that? Oh, the best man! All right. uh, <laughs> someone deserves, you know, to have some positive after match function press conferences, and and also the I think the pleasing thing is that because we had so much more ball this week, the Webby was like, you know, I've been waiting to see what we would do if we had if not half the ball or slightly more ball because every other game we've had less position as well. So you could even see that he didn't have to make 60 tackles this week, you know. He only had to make 40, you know. But, <laughs> um, so, they, yeah, I mean, but that just goes to show, like, he's uh, – like they just love him, eh? You know, all the players play for him. Um, he's all about culture, all about the connection, and they're really talking about a bit of a deeper connection across the, across the group. So – um, mm. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see, and um, yeah, he deserves uh, a good season this year. Yeah, it is really cool eh, to actually. You, you do really feel that connection that they have to the, you know, to the team, to the jersey, uh, even to us fans. They're, you know, they're they're out there and they're really, you know, giving it some for us now. Um, Isaac, one thing I've spotted, uh, as opposed to what was happening last year and the year before, whatever. Um, the amount of times that we are able to stop a guy within about half an inch from scoring so far, we've only been three games in, but already we've had a stack of tries saved in that manner. How cool is that to see? Yeah, what do you think of that, man? The defense is, um, they're definitely gelling. And I think as the season goes on, it'll get even better. But uh, one of the sort of 
things I look for in the defense, unfortunately, is Sean Johnson. He was a turnstile last year. And the amount of one-on-one tackles he's able to make, because I think he's got the confidence in the players around him to commit to the right uh, the right person on defense just allows him to make the right decision. He's not mm. People aren't having to think so hard on defense because everyone's communicating. And it's not for – it's it's obviously fatigue is a big thing for defense but and communication as well, but it's just having that trust in the players either side of you to make the right call. And it seems like more often than not, people are making the right decision, decision so people can just – yeah, they don't even have to think about what they're doing on defense. They just do. Mm. So, yeah, haven't seen that for a long time as well from the Warriors again. And that that might be even more pleasing than all the points that they score is just the uh, toughness and the intensity on defense. Mm. Yeah, it was really pleasing. Like, you see, like even, like, um, you know, the Cowboys would make a line break and Sean was one of the guys there to, like, you know, stop the play. And it was just kind of taking me back a few years because we'd kind of forgotten about it. But everyone knows about his highlight, you know, real steps and tries and all that. But he was always a real gun at getting back and actually saving tries. And so to see that aspect coming in is, is really good. We've already halved, or currently we've halved our uh, points per game conceded. So that's very pleasing. Um, Moneta, um, on the on the new side of things, another new guy came in, um, Tain Tuopiki, playing at fullback. Uh, what did you make of his play? And uh, and also, you know, how are we going to work things when Chan's re enters the scene? <laughs> Webermania. <laughs> Sorry, Greg Spence. <laughs> that up. Yeah, off to the get-go. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was solid, eh? You know, he didn't, he, was, he didn't make any mistakes. So I thought he was, the, you know, really onto it and really good debut. Um, and on that note, um, yeah, he'll definitely be, like, in our own material going forward. But um, I watched the uh, post-interview with Webster, and he mentioned that CNK would definitely be back, but um, I don't know how, how do you pronounce his name properly, uh, Jared? To to a picky, oh, to yeah, he'll, he'll to definitely picky. be you know stepping from behind, <laughs> making you know he won't be too far behind. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> too, too far behind. <laughs> so, <laughs> not in that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, we have still got somewhere to hide on the podcast, but on YouTube, it's, uh, we're, we're exposed because all of a sudden we start to like giggle in the background. No, but he, he had a solid performance, and yeah, he was good under the high ball. You know, he made some solid, you know, runs from the back, and um, yeah, everyone played well. Yeah. You know, great debut. You should, you no, know, awesome debut. Yeah. I, I was actually thinking as well, um, just in a moment of madness. I was thinking that we should all come dressed doing the, the Pompey thing with the shirt over the over the head for this podcast. And I thought, no, that's going to get a bit too, a bit too hot. So um, anyways, um, Buddha, uh, I, I kept thinking of you throughout the game because it looked like there was um, Nico Hines 2.0 out there for the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> a little slick fella. Yeah, yeah, he looked all right. <laughs> he did. He did look great in the first 20 minutes, but we, we soon enough nullified his effect day. Eh? So... Um, just on Pompey, yeah, I guess I think a lot of Warriors fans just need to give him a little bit of a little bit of praise on his attack. Well, a couple of things: his yardage out of sets, he was strong, um, and one of the best attacking players we've seen for a long time. Basically, went through, held three guys, held them up, shoot over the head, pop the pass over for a try. But uh, so good, good to see him playing well. A couple of like cheeky little offloads when they're not required. Mm. Um, in the back Especially end of the, the game. Back end day. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, look, I think it's old, us, us old warriors thinking, shit, you know, we can lose this. We're up by what, 16 mm-hmm. with eight to go. We can, yep. we can lose by 16. You yeah. know, but, um, yeah. But credit with credit Stu because he's, he's taken a lot of flack this season so far and he's, uh, on the balance, I think he's playing well. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a fair call. Um, now, Isaac, uh, we're about to jump out in a couple of minutes. One more question for you. Um, our starts are, are a little bit scratchy. We spoke about this with uh, assistant coach Richard G- Agar last week. Um, how do we go about maybe just you know improving what we do from the from the get go against the Bulldogs? Oh, scratchy starts. I mean, I don't know if it's a concentration thing or people getting caught up in 
the I don't know, just a bit too much adrenaline, maybe. Weber mania. <laughs> yeah, Weber, getting caught up in Weber mania. Maybe. <laughs> I think they just need to you just settle in. You get your first set out of the way. I think they need to just concentrate on just hitting some key landmarks and um, you know, benchmarks in the game. Like, let's get through our first set, see how it pans out, put a good, good kick in, follow up with a good chase. See where we see where we go from there, and just mm. rinse, wash, repeat, and then opportunities will open up as as the game goes on. So they don't have to try try and do too much too soon, and in any of the games moving forward, and, and most of the best teams um, settle into that sort of groove. They just get the they get the, you know the first set out of the way. Um, they find their sort of rhythm for the first few um, first twenty minutes or so. And then the game opens up, and then that's where they take over. Um, so, yeah, I think the Warriors just need to learn to sort of not, you know, to want to do too much too soon. They mm. don't have to come out of the, the blocks um, too hot. Yeah, that's right. We'll be all the better for it if we don't concede the first try because we, as you say, we get warmed up and we get going. So mm. uh, speaking of getting going, uh, we're going to just jump out very quickly uh, and be back in a few moments chatting with Warriors legend, the OG. Hytro Okasini, back here in a second on Warriors Anonymous. All right, welcome back to Warriors Anonymous. This is very, very exciting times. Uh, and also uh, breakfast time at the moment over in the UK, where our special guest is joining us from. Now, Hytro, welcome along to the show, bro. Um, I, need a, I need to check one thing before we even get into the interview, because we have a segment called Say My Name, Say My Name on our podcast. And that's basically around saying, uh, you know, players' names correctly. So what we do is we say how the Australian commentators say it, and then we try and correct that. So I'll say it how the, uh, the commentators used to say your name, and, bro, you uh, you correct me if, if that's all good. So uh, back in the days when you were playing for the Warriors in 1995, one of the OGs, uh, the, uh, the commentators are called you uh, Hydra So uh, how, how, do we, uh, how do we correctly pronounce your name? I think because the commentators... Uh, Okaseni, like perfect. The other one, so I got used to that. Yeah, good. Good. This is really cool. Yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah, that's all good. Well, we're, we're, we're taking them to task nowadays and going, hey, we need to uh, we need to straighten a few things out with, uh, with saying players' names. Uh, so it's good to actually hear your name for the first time probably ever for uh, a lot of our uh, our viewers and listeners. So uh, um, thank you for that, bro. Uh, we just had um, around, multicultural round in the NRL. Uh, so, uh, main what main is your um, your cultural background? So, uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, I was born in New Zealand, so you know, Samoan heritage. Yes. Hey. <laughs> oh, sweet! Did we just have a little internet? <laughs> I didn't do anything. It? Oh, I think so. <laughs> Is the, the I'm not sure it was you or me, or but one of us. <laughs> um, we must be. We might be cousins as well, because uh, I'm a quarter new way in, bro. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, that's awesome, man. Awesome, I can remember. Awesome. So um, Daniel's going to lead us in with uh, the oh, first cool, question. Cool, man. Hey, for, uh, uh, we were uh, grilling of you. Day, day. <laughs> I remember um, chanting your name, but uh, being part of the OGs, that original Warriors squad. Can you tell us what it was like to run out out of the tunnel in that first game in 1995 versus the Broncos? What was that night like, Hytro? Well, that was a special night, um, not only for myself, but you know, for all the players and uh, for all the fans that were, were at the game. I remember going down to the number two ground to warm up, and uh, we could see all the fireworks and that, that were going off uh, the entertainment um, on the number one field, and then... Yeah, we all got caught into the tunnel and then walked down and then we could see all the flames and Maori, uh, you know, Haka, that's an Haka and, uh, and then just the roar of the crowd was just you know, so emotional and so special to be there. Awesome. Yeah, that was a great night to remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was amazing, awesome. eh? and and look, I You're mean, that year, memories, first I'm year like, like a, a real magical <laughs> year. How did how did it feel within the camp, the squad, to be you know playing professional uh, NRL for a New Zealand based team? Well, it was you know they've been uh, you know looking for 
uh, were building a team for how many years before you know entering this competition. So uh, everyone was aware of how important uh, that first game was going to be, how we were going to turn up and play, and I think all the other Aussie teams were because we were the first game on that night. So they were all looking at us to see how we were going to fare in the competition. You know, one club, one nation. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, but at the same time, we had to adopt, well, we're professionals now, so we had to adopt, our, uh, change our minds and focus on uh, things to do uh, more professionally and uh, how we trained uh, for the speed of the game and, uh, you know, just a, a different, you know, aspect on playing rugby professional, you know, new for quite a few of us. Yeah, awesome. Um, it was such a great year. Like, I mean, you know, as fans, we've gotten behind it. Um, but uh, as a season, I think the, t- the team won 13 of 22 games that year um, and just narrowly missed out on the playoffs. And, look, we understand it was uh, possibly fa- uh, a factor was a substitution issue against the West Magpies. So how did the how did the team feel to, you know, have a good season but just narrowly miss out on the, on the playoffs? I think... After that West game and uh, losing the two points, uh, the team were deflated because it could come back and haunt us, and it did. Um, if we had got those points and uh, we would have made the top nine, then we could have gone a lot further. Do you think we were wrong? I think so. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 do, do you think we were wrong? So, so if I'm going to <laughs> Substitution rule. Hey, Sossy here. Oh, Look, it's, uh, no secret that you're a bit of a style icon back in the day. Um, maybe even now. I don't know what's going on. But um, you know, you're well known for your strong runs as a front row. But you also played. Um, you played a lot of hooker as well. So how did that uh, transition come about? And um, how'd you kick that into first grade as well? I want to first. Signed um, for the Warriors. I was back in '93 when they come to watch uh, my cousin Tony Tatuku play at Mount Albert. And I was at, I was hooking at Manukau and I had a good game. And then I got the call, you know, picked up and uh, went from there. Now in preseason training, like I played hook all my life, and uh, to be asked to play prop because Andy Platt was injured. So they were looking at someone to replace them, and that was me. So I had to try and uh, adapt my game because you know I'm not never played it before, and uh, I sort of put the attitude that give me the ball and I'll run as hard as I can and uh, try and do my best for my team. Well, you took to it like a duck to water. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's pretty natural. Uh, sort of, I, I, like, I look natural <laughs> watching absolutely. you. Absolutely. Like, uh, you've been playing prop your whole life. Well, I was classed as one of the uh, our trainer, Bob Lanigan. He thought that I was one of the smaller props. But I, was, I was probably a lot stronger than a lot of the props when I was more mobile because I was a bit lighter. Uh, so I thought, you know, I was okay uh, Pound for pound with uh, their props, all the other teams. Uh, so, yeah, that was that's just me. That's how I am. So, that's how I play. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I, I saw. Um, I was watching some of the highlights of that first season, and including that first game against Brisbane. And I noticed that you had a nice sneaky little uh, try assist in there. You you gave a pass off to Teo Ropati, and I was like, oh, I think I could you can see the you know the the dummy uh, half smarts and yeah, skills in there. I think you, it was you Petty were, that you know, just kind of snuck it on in my there, blind side, overran us, and I thought it was like uh, <laughs> the Broncos. So, so you know, I could have gone straight under the sticks, but man, the, I'm not greedy. So I gave it to Teo. <laughs> <laughs> So your Warriors co-op came about <laughs> because people were coming to see Tony. You're a good Tutu, man. Is that right? Yes. Oh, jeez, that's yeah. crazy. Um, so obviously your cousin, but then you also played alongside your brother Paul as well. So 
did he have a did he have a massive influence on on your style of play in your career? Oh, of course he did. You know, as youngsters, you know, we always used to. He was the fastest out of our family. We used to have races, and I was always last. Um, but he, Paul liked to hit, you know, um, big hit, do big hits and tackles and that, and we sort of liked to follow uh, in his footsteps. So we used to uh, practice on each other, down, running down the hallway into the bedroom, trying to get our, our technique right. Because we used to watch a lot of. Um, Winfield Cup, you know, back then, and uh, <laughs> there was a lot of big hits going on there. There's, you know, some biffs and what have you. So we we sort of like that stuff. So Paul wasn't, you know, Paul wasn't influence <laughs> on me, and uh, you know, enjoyed it. That's cool. <laughs> Whole way hit up. <laughs> Oh, no, get good hallway, by, uh, uh, game the game of rugby league the best. <laughs> There's no way to hide. Yeah. 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 So awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. One of the, the sibling starts <laughs> crying, and the other one's like, sure, you're right, it's okay. I'll say, you know, shit, you're not a hater, <laughs> you deliberately try to get your brother in trouble oh. or do you try to get Paul in trouble by crying really loud yeah. 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 the other two that were holding me down and so it's that was the, the original on report on right report kind of parents, at now. Yeah. how do you see uh, forwards now, yeah. nowadays and the way they play and there was like some of the talk from last year that the big men themselves are, are starting to be phased out. What do you, what do you think of the style now nowadays in terms well, of forwards? I think now you know the game is still fast, uh, but you don't have to have really massive uh, props uh, in the game now. You know you can use tick and rolls that are more lean and agile, and uh, I think that's what they're doing now with uh, with the game. And um, you know, they still run it up as hard as anybody else. But, uh, you know, yesterday's game, uh, Warriors game was, uh, you've seen how the forwards, Warriors forwards were, you know, go, the go forward was great. The handling skills was great. Yeah, the defense, yeah, the yeah, defense was great as well. So, you know, it's just got to uh, try and keep out those little errors. And, uh, you know, I think the team's going to do all right. Oh, cool, cool. Well, first game. So you you, uh, you keep a time, keep a bit of an eye on the no, boys, got so on the team, got and their fortunes the from, from over in the UK. And, uh, my sky was just buffed for a long, long time. So <laughs> I said, I was wasting sky. my time here. So I ended up, I ended up watching it on, uh, on YouTube, just the highlights. Um, uh. the, same was for the, the same was for the second game. The same was for the second game. YouTube. But, no we have we have problems with Sky over here. That too. sounds like um, sounds like the Sky app. <laughs> but yes, it's all around the world. <laughs> but yesterday's game, I Fair got enough. to watch the full match, so I was happy. Oh, <laughs> awesome! Awesome. <laughs> um, I guess one of the most famous things, like I think, Oof, most of us yeah, remember good. Though, is when you ran the ball. When nice. you ran the ball, your flowing mullet was kind of like traditional, <laughs> you know, iconic of you. Um, so I guess you look at some of the mullets nowadays. What do you think of those? <laughs> There's some crazy ones, eh? <laughs> hey, look at that. You, yeah, you think, nah, that's not good. Uh, but, uh, yeah, some of them that way. Yeah, what about yeah. Adam Fanua's, uh, Adam Fanua Blake's haircut? The yeah. uh, genie from Aladdin. Oh, that, hey, that's exactly what I thought when he came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought he was going to be the last of must, uh, must be the light. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought he was more that. I thought it was more Last of the Mohicans or something like that, you know, because they had that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, someone's going to fire his barber, right? That haircut was average. <laughs> no, no, he paid, well. he paid well. Keep going. Oh, the genie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you can see as well, like, yeah. it was obviously fresh because awesome. he had a tan line on um, his head. Yeah, so, so you, the... you, you, you see you're up in England, so what do you do nowadays? Um, I work for an engineering company, um, we deal with uh, food and beverage companies, 
and um, oh, nice. I, I work in the stores department, small team, and you know we uh, do the inward outward goods and you know, load wagons and stuff. But at the moment, I'm off. Uh, with the knee re- I've just had a total knee replacement, so it's been six weeks. I've been uh, mm. six weeks. I've been sat at home and just recovering. Oh, nice. Oh, not nice to that. <laughs> not nice to me. Oh, nice. <laughs> and that's all because of, rig- of rugby league. Yeah. <laughs> Is that yeah. all rugby league? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll ho- yeah. I hope you heal uh, pretty quickly. I just can't do it. Really. But, um, yeah. yeah, right. Oh, that's a bit of both. Everything combined. Well, was that um, was, was <laughs> that NRL rugby league or, or was um, it Norway rugby league? league that got the, the, the knee injury. Oh, oh, six weeks off. Run fast. Oh, cool. Oh, awesome, man. No, that's cool. Well, we've, um, yeah, we've kind of rattled through our questions pretty well. Yeah, well, He's uh, going to throw some freestyle uh, in there. I can see Daniel's it's smiling. Funny, funny because, uh, freestyle. Freelance questions to throw in there. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know what sort of questions you were going to throw in there. So I was a bit nervous, then, you know? Um, it's been a long time. Don't be nervous. Oh, I wonder, don't be nervous. Oh, no. Yeah, we, yeah man. No. Yeah. Um, we always like to ask. I mean, we always like to ask. Oh, bro. I think the wife's waiting for us to make a breakfast. Uh, we, we better not, we better okay. not keep you high, Cho. Okay. Better not uh, keep you high. Then you want to know who is back, back in the event. Then you might say, I always like to know. I always like to know. Kind of back in the day, we always asked. Uh, well, we asked the current squad when we talk about who was the cheeky players, who were the players that you know like to have a bit of laugh, or, uh, crack up to have around the changing room. So take us back to that '95 team, man. Like, who was, who was the what we call the grub or the pest, the the player that all the players used to be have to be a bit wary about because they're a bit of a trickster, a bit of a jokester. Who was that back well, in the that, day? That would have to be Gavin Hill. <laughs> Gavin Hill. Oh, yeah. Gavin, he was a real oh. funny fellow. That guy, <laughs> <laughs> lovely man, but you know he's always oh, yeah. having a joke and uh, playing. Hey. Good. But uh, I think uh, I think the worst one. Interesting. Is, uh, okay. The trouble is Sidiru. <laughs> Man, he's, he's a real Maori guy. That fella. Love it to Vis, love it to Vis, but he was so he's really funny as well. Eh? He's always up to laugh. You could probably tell he was. <laughs> I was just going to say, he's got, quite crafty, eh? So, yeah, as a football player, he was oh, very funny. crafty, that's, that's, right? That's funny as well. You know, he had, definitely had game. Yeah. So, and I think Jed was going to say, he's got a, a, a nice little Insta YouTube channel going on at I've the moment, doesn't he, Jed? I don't know how he's, uh, <laughs> you know, for the food that he, he cooks up and catches and unbelievable. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you get that? Yeah, the crayfish the size of a dog, himself, I think, yeah. the other week. I was like, wow. Mm. <laughs> Bloody. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I know that. Um... <laughs> nice. I know that uh, Daniel is, is keen to know in the current playing squad who was like the, uh, the pound for pound, like the, the strongest player in the squad. Yeah. Uh, in the 1995 um... side. Would that have been yourself? Because, you, well, like you said, you were one of the, the uh, smaller and you know, props in the rotation. Would uh, you have been one of the I think stronger I was guys, pound for pound? I was weighing 100 kilos, and uh, I benched 175. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what they do now. <laughs> they probably do well over well over that now, but it's, it's been 28 years. So. It's still pretty. It's, it's, about, it's about the same as... <laughs> Twice... <laughs> it's like lifting um <laughs> yeah, kg. It's like, <laughs> like lifting Sidera's bloody um crayfish. And he can still um, put it away. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in all, ser- all seriousness, you, you watched a bit yesterday's game. Um how are you thinking the current team's looking? Oh, what man. what do you like about the the setup the Warriors have got going on? I think must uh you know, the half the half start uh, bossing the plays and Especially like Johnson, he, you know, needs to come back to his old style of playing, off the cuff stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, they have their structures, but then also you need to play like eyes up football. And when Johnson's on fire, the whole team get around him and, uh, you know, they stop start doing things this year. Yeah, nice. You um, I understand you did a bit, bit of coaching right. after your playing career. So, uh, we we spoke with um, Warriors assistant coach uh, Richard Agar last week, and he said that one of the, one of the mm-hmm. curses of being yeah. a coach is that you oh, can't sit down and just yeah. have a beer and watch a game because he I, automatically uh, starts analyzing ago, what's uh, going on. He can't help it. Is, is, is it the same 90s. for you as well? Do you find that when you watch a game? And, you, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, when you're coaching, when you're, coaching you're, you're, you're always uh, preparing like days, days before or weeks before of what sort of session you're going to put together. The only uh, difficult thing is when you get you get to training and hardly any lads turn up. <laughs> that goes out, <laughs> out the window and then uh, you got to try something else for the numbers. But you're you're always thinking you, know, you come home, you think about uh, what you're going to do the next day, uh, you know, how you can better yourself as a coach, and how you can make the team um, a lot better. He was right. He was right. I think when he um, what was uh, Richie left, Agar like uh, to play against in, man? Uh, in ninety eight. <laughs> and I went from Hull uh, in 98. I went to Bediston in 99. So I just, I just missed him. I think he went to Dewsbury. So, uh, but we crossed, we crossed paths uh, when I used to stay in a place called Normanton in West Yorkshire. Ah, yeah. Yeah, sweet. Now he's, uh, now he's doing well for his coaching and that. So, you know, good on him. Right. Yeah, cool. Oh, awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you think? Um, yes, oh, sorry, can I ask a question? Oh, that's cool. Small cool. world. You, right. you were saying that you were, you know, you went from <laughs> hooker to prop. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and you were um, one of the smaller props around, but you're go ahead, you probably go. one of the stronger, yeah, um, well, probably one of the stronger players. And you've said that you know the game is sort of moving that way right now. How do you think you would have fit in today's game? How do you think you you might have performed if you were playing uh, in this era of rugby league? I think I would have done done all right, you know. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> yeah, Football's absolutely. in the blood, so depending whenever, whatever era you play, you're gonna do your best. And um, I think I could have uh, handled it with these guys this year. Do you think there would have been more scope for you to use your ball playing skills, of course. You know, your hooker yeah, yeah. skills? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to kick as well yeah. long time ago. Oh. <laughs> Oh, mm. would have loved to see uh, a yeah. bomb from the prop. <laughs> I did, you know, I, I did one against the, uh, the goal line. I oh, did yeah. one against Illawarra yeah, yeah. at home. I think mm. I got the ball by accident. It was the fifth tackle, so I kicked it. <laughs> that wasn't a bad kick at all. We need, we need to see more of that. We need Sweet. to see more of that. The game's got to evolve, and more props got to do forty twenties and stuff like that. So yeah, did it go oh, well? Done something <laughs> like that. Why oh not? yeah, <laughs> Why not? yeah. Yeah. Now, j- just a, a quick question. Um, just going back to the mullet. What was the um, <laughs> the, the, the sort of hair care regime oh, that, that you had for it? Like, uh, you know, how, how, you know, how did you curate it? It was it was, it was pretty <laughs> iconic. No, no, it wasn't, no, I wasn't no, like, I wasn't like doing it all the time. You know, in the mirror like this. <laughs> <laughs> you went like a Fabio, eh? Yeah, nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, you get some guys that, uh, when I was over here in England playing with some of the lads, and, and they'll be holding the mirror before we even went out, you know, the like, gel in the hair. And, uh, <laughs> oh, awesome. awesome. This is all natural. Yeah. So yeah. good. That's what I do before the podcast. So good. Yeah. So <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> no soul glow here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, looks good, Isaac. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. <laughs> no. 
It made a, I definitely made you look uh, made you look fast as well. Any more boys? Any more so questions? To fire up Hydra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. True. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll let you. <laughs> yeah, we can't have you getting in trouble on on Mother's Day, bro. So, um, bro, look, um, thanks so much for joining us, uh, especially early in the morning over in the UK. Uh, I've got to say, um, when I, I put up a post on our Facebook group just saying that we were getting you on the podcast, yeah. and I haven't really seen response quite like what we saw today from our, um, our you know members. They were they were super excited to um, to hear from you, bro. So, uh, you know, I know it's been a while since 1995 and and the teams you played in, but um, just got to say, like, you know, we we really appreciate what you you know did, thanks, what you yeah, made the lot. foundation thanks for you guys our as well. squad. Enjoyed and, it. Um, yeah, thanks, man. We just uh, just want to say thanks. <laughs> We've so much enjoyed for everything. it. Nice. Hi, Tro. All right, thanks, man. You guys take awesome, bro. You guys take care awesome. today. <laughs> awesome, thanks, Hi, Tro. Yeah, man. Hi, Truck Casino. How awesome was that, fellas? Uh, I, I noticed you boys were, were throwing around a couple of player comparisons from the uh, the modern day game. Isaac and Buddha, who did you think he looked like in, in terms of his playing style? Oh, I would say Ruben Cotter, mm. probably. When you know, we were just talking about before, you know, back when we were younger, it just seemed he was like larger than life. And then he sort of puts into perspective how actually big of a player he was. And he sort of compared him to maybe one of those smaller, harder running forwards from nowadays, like Ruben Cotter. So, yeah, just interesting to think of it that way. Yeah, he actually would have been more suited to his skill set, eh? Like the, uh, just the nuances of, you know, the timing of the pass and, and all that, the extra skills that he had as a front rower on top of, you know, you know, transitioning to be a front rower as well. So, uh, but really cool. Actually, man, I just forgot... Um, I forgot to bring up uh, the fact that he was on uh, a skits episode. <laughs> oh, I do remember that. I remember him being on skits. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I had a look at that today, and I was like, "Oh, I need to bring this up," and then I just completely forgot. So, um, anyways, that's good. <laughs> yeah, skits. Oh, I remember that show. Yeah. I was about to ask him because obviously he said he was nervous to talk to us, and we we're probably nervous to talk to him. So, um, I was like, "Oh, I, was, I should have just said, oh, it's just like being on skits, bro." So. Um, <laughs> We've got some. Uh, we've got the uh, the expense account for this week. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. Um, who would like to run through that? Because I'm just putting it uh, up on the agenda now. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. To the agenda. That's all right. It's, it's it's live. This is uh, it's like breaking news almost. Um, so uh, if, if you're joining us for the first time on the podcast, um, Greg Spence, our stats and insights guy, gives us all the good stuff as well as some handy catchphrases. For our Warriors season, um, <laughs> we're, we're, which I mucked the, up already. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> Weathermania, the Revolution, aka okay, Weathermania. Oh, I'll kick in with the expense report. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so Greg tells us that after giving up fifty tries on their right edge in two thousand twenty-two at two point one per game, uh, the first three rounds of two thousand twenty-three has seen the Warriors just concede three. Uh, tries on that edge in zero in the last 103 minutes of play. Oof. So uh, definitely an upswing. Hey, oh, Richard oh, Agar, Richard Agar, big city, brother. Hey, there you go. All there about the go. edge. We love improvement Agar, Agar. here. Um, <laughs> in round four of the, out of the NRL, the Warriors have an all-time record of 16 wins, one draw, and 11 losses. It's their second most productive round at gaining competition points from matches played. So wow. good signs there. Um Against a resurgent Bulldogs team? How have mm. they been faring today, though? I think they, they won. They won. They, the Tigers? Just. Yeah. Oh, that's the Tigers. Just, just, the yeah, Tigers. just. So, 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 saying that, the Tigers came home strong. Did they? Yeah. So, yeah, very strong. So, oh, very okay. strong. Very strong. Um, yeah. It's a bit of controversy. Six, six. Bit of um, well, controversy going around at the Tigers, from what I hear, between Benji Marshall and Shainzy, which mm. wouldn't have expected. Maybe just a clash you can of... see it on the, on the football field, it looks... For 60, 70 minutes, it looked horrible. So, yeah, yeah, pretty disjointed. Yeah, not so great, but good news for us. Hopefully next week. Uh, and the Warriors' last loss to the Bulldogs at Mount Smart Stadium way back in 2012 and are unbeaten in their last four head-to-head matches. Uh, <sighs> on the flip side, though, the Bulldogs have won 78% of their matches versus the Warriors played in Auckland on a Sunday, Sunday afternoon. afternoon. Confusing. Oh, let's wrap your head around that. 
Yeah. That's yeah, okay. That's yeah, interesting. I remember that 2012 game. Bloody Ben Barber bloody wrecked us. Ooh, anyway, he wrecked himself. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, for all Benny. Um, <laughs> before we look at the um, the game against the Bulldogs, just quickly, uh, not great results this week for the New South Wales Cup and SG Ball teams. Uh, both of them uh, suffered defeats. Now, the New South Wales Cup is still early days. They're into round three, I think it is. Uh, but for the SG Ball team, uh, that, that may be pretty close to putting them out of semi-final contention. So uh, they'll, they'll need to sort of do something pretty big from here on in because there's only a couple of rounds left in the uh the regular season there so uh, but they, they they played pretty well against the panthers they um yeah they, they hung tough but uh just couldn't get the dubs so uh hopefully both teams bounce back next week uh there's double hitter uh sunday at mount smart stadium sunday um against the bulldogs so um so if you're in yeah if you're in and around mount smart on sunday um go and check out the uh the double hitter for the, <laughs> okay. the south wales cup band sg ball be uh be awesome to check out the, uh, the talent there sunday what the um <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, boys, uh, round four, Bulldogs uh, coming up this week. What are we, Friday night or Saturday night? Sunday. Mm. Sunday. <laughs> Sunday. Are we Sunday? Sunday? Are we Sunday? We are Sunday. Hey, that's a triple header. My bad. Okay. I don't know. Um, is it Sunday? It might actually be, yeah. I don't know. Let's have a look. Yeah, it is Sunday. Okay. Sunday. Where's this five day? Sunday. <laughs> No, what is game that? Sunday? <laughs> so the doggies are coming over. They've they've looked sort of yeah. They've, they've shown a bit of promise. So um, you know we we definitely shouldn't um, take them lightly. Uh, and we've got a couple of injuries as we mentioned. Obviously uh, Jackson Ford and um, Clean Up Curran weren't available as was um, chance for uh, the game just gone. So I don't know what the story is on their return, but um, hopefully one of them can come back maybe. Uh, but apparently Egan well, the, is if it's, not um, looking likely, is it correct? Head injury assessment. Um, is this the new concussion or? The new rules are 11-day uh, stand-down. 11 11-day stand down. Stand down period, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so that, rule, that will rule way Egan out. And, and then um, Barnett, no Jones, Well, he's been cleared of anything serious. So that was that was posted about two hours ago. Oh, um, okay. Maybe a bit three hours ago. So then the club, so ruled out and he was up around walking around today, apparently. So um, it's just whether, yeah, there's any lasting damage for him or as well. So um, safe to say, yeah, no Egan. So our boy will be there, Freddie Lussick. Hey. Uh, and he'll be ready to go. Yeah. Um, and yeah, with the chance and Jackson's board, you know, probably should be available for selection, you'd think. But let, let's, let's see what, what comes out on Tuesday. Um and obviously Barney, yeah, they may want to rest and we don't know yet. So yeah. um but the good thing is, you know, we've got we've got options. Yeah. Contingencies, which is nice. Um gonna be a long season, but um but so far we've we've managed to cover a lot. Mm. Uh, we haven't got any suspensions coming up for from that. No well, maybe the um there was oh well Egan perhaps because he was put on report for a crusher uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, really but I don't know whether it, yeah. it was nothing. I mean, but I reckon, um, you know, for the Cowboys, um, Subashaki, Subashaki, Suzuki, Gim, Shibasaki, Shibasaki, Shibasaki. Shibasaki. He mm. he should face a bit of time for that. That was a oh, horrible yeah. crusher. And the thing that really annoys me about that that's the worst form is because it was a second effort to keep the player on the ground, so it wasn't mm. needed. But yeah. it's that classic, let's stay on him as well. So, um, you know, I think the quicker they get that stuff out of the game, um, those extra efforts as well. The first ta- the tackle was done, and he just flopped on top of him. So, um, yeah, I was, yeah I, just lucky. I, that. I thought he kind of tripped over, though. I thought that was – because I didn't think oh, he did, meant uh, um, the tackle. Because I, I looked Barnett at it. Or Shibasaki? Shibasaki, um, that particular. Which one was I, it? I looked at him t- trying to do a second effort, eh? And the, oh, yeah. I think I the rest of – the refs have actually been really good across the first three rounds in sort of um, making sure, well, penalising second efforts or, or flops. I've noticed that. Like I, thought it was, a, I thought it was negligence. I thought it was negligence, but I didn't yeah. think it was intent. I don't think there was any intent, but it was pretty yeah. sloppy mm. uh, on his part. the intent part. for a second effort, I reckon. There's an intent for a second yeah. effort, and then, then he got himself into trouble by how he did it. Yeah, that's, that's, probably, did yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what I thought. Effort, then there's no issue. 
Yeah, mm. he went for the second effort, and that time Barnett had sort of fallen over, and then that got him into the bad position because mm. his neck bent pretty far forward, like the yeah. little thing. Yeah. Turtle, yeah. Bucket, is it, you know what is, Yeah, because it's not yeah. like he did something like you know some of the seconds that Melbourne Storm used to do, like lift them up and go. In, oh, you know, nah, use their body. Nah. Oof, that was yeah. Back in yeah. those days, it was definitely was, accidental. Oh, no. He yeah. fell into that part, right? But what we're trying to say is that if he, you just got to get that. Like, I'm glad yeah. the referees are trying to snap down on those second yeah, efforts. That's a good thing. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. You just don't need that because that's where injuries can happen. Is when people make those second efforts that aren't needed, mm. and yeah, something like that just sort of occurs body, body positions and stuff like that they shouldn't even be trying it but people will always try it on they'll yeah. always try it all right um monitor the uh in the game against the bulldogs what do you think um uh, our boys will be looking to work on to improve to to get another win um it's probably obviously the first 10 to 20 minutes kind of you know the penalty count again was i reckon richard agar would be uh like going there was a bit high for their liking Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we got five more penalties than they did, I think, in regards to the game. So they'll, they'll be looking to cut those out a bit more. And, um, yeah, and I think um, they'll be watching out for Karaz and, mm. and they're kind of in, you know, the back the back five. So um, they seem to be turning it on at the moment. So, yeah, but that Karaz guy. Yeah, he's a heck of a player, eh? He's, mm, he's nice. good. He's bloody good. Yeah. And, um, but. If we just keep with the same formula, you know, this is improving. We're, we're improving week to week, I think, yeah. and uh, I think it should be a good match. I, I, think, I actually think it could be a tight match, to be honest with you, even mm. though they squeaked through today. So, yeah. um, but I think it'll be a good game. Uh, key players for us, Buddha. Who do you uh, who do you think will be uh, you know critical to us taking the points? I think we just keep keep building on on the middle, right? So I think it's our our middle four pack uh, with our edges. So, you know, the work of um, Tohu, right, leading from the front. Um, if if uh, Barnett's available, Barnett and AFB have formed a, a, a pretty good duo as well. Um, and then I just, there's something about Walker and Jazz coming in. I just love it. Um, mm-hmm. They bring a yeah. bit, of, bit of ball playability, bit of aggression, bit of aggro, bit of defensive energy, good run meters. There's something about it. And I think if we can just exploit that part, then I, I think off the back of that, SJ does get the sp- time, does get the space. You know, he mm. can dish it off to his boys out wide as well. So for me, um, yeah, let's just keep – we're layering. I think we're layering our, def- our, our attack. You know, it was, was it got job done against the Knights. It was okay. You know, it, it was a bit clunky at times, but we had a really good set piece against the Roosters, and it just seemed to – click a little bit more this weekend as well so mm. yeah i'm just uh looking forward to seeing that and just wanted to make a point so moneta said jacob Kraz is someone to keep an eye out he had 20 21 runs today for 255 meters so <laughs> he is he's doing the weekend week out eh? yeah yeah and watching that game as well um uh what i noticed is this is something i mean we talked about maybe there was some criticism for not attacking high kicks sometimes um but the tigers tried that a few times got it wrong and basically the doggies ran just took runaways so that's when uh, the fox is you know out the box um also the fox <laughs> intercept as well we're gonna have to be mindful about when we're sort of two on one that sort of thing um because you just give him half a yard eh, and he's gone so there's a few things like that but honestly i think if we can, can building we're we're going to do the doggies. It's going to be a, you'd expect a pretty good crowd um, on Sunday for the triple header. <clears throat> Correct myself from earlier. Uh, yeah, triple header of footballing action. It's going to be a beauty. Isaac, uh, what do you think? Daniel's just touched on a couple of, um, you know, key points there for the dogs. Uh, you know, what do you think they're going to bring in and what are we going to have to try and, you know, just try and suppress? Uh, I think one of those things is, is CNK going to be back for next week? If not, then Matt Burton is going to send it to the sky and really oh, test out oh, Tane to our Piki. He's, <laughs> he's going to do it. We know he's going to do it. We know how big he can kick it. So um, Tane's going to have to do a, a lot of practice this week and along with that other, you know, the back two, uh, the back three, sorry. Um, they're going to have to do a lot of practice under those high balls. And I think, um, yeah, they're just going to have to be careful of, of their back line. There's, there just seems to be a bit of strike 
in their back line. I mean, the, the youngster, mm. Paul Alamotti, uh, Jack Averillo, they're all pretty highly skilled players. Cole Flanagan's just sort of steering that team around. And Matt Burton, um, the Matt Burton, uh, Josh Adokar sort of combination, um, to touch on Dan's point, you give him half a, half a meter, Josh Adokar's gone. And mm. our wingers aren't necessarily the fastest at turning around. Yeah. Um, I think they'll look to exploit that with a, um, you know, fairly rookie uh, fullback. Yep. There might that there might be an opportunity there to put an early kick and get Josh to to chase. Um, but yeah, for us to for us to win, I think yeah, just like Dan said, we're just layering that attack and just every week, just sort of getting it to click even more. I mm-hmm. think for me, in my opinion about you know Jazz and Dylan, I just think a lot of maybe a lot of teams won't be used to seeing that sort of look yeah. on the field. Like, oh well, here's a small Ford pack. Um, you know, we we should be able to dominate, but with their leg speed and their intensity, they, you know, I, I just don't think teams are prepared. So mm. I think that's where we've got a maybe a, an ace up our sleeve or a distinct advantage is that speed and play of the ball from those two. We so, could also uh, buy ourselves like a half a second or so as the defense is like, wait, which one of these guys is Ford's like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. anyway, that yeah. <laughs> Boys, we've got to jump on out of here. Uh, quick heart on uh, around the room. Are we going to start the season with a three and one record? We'll start with you, Buddha. God. And if I could, we could have, could have come close to a, you know, a four and a as well. Just saying, you know, that recent game. But um, yeah, I think we're, we're looking good. Isaac? I'm all aboard Weber Mania. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's more you macho man than Hulkster, but more Weber Mania. You look more like Bad News yeah. Brown, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was more like the Bushwhackers. Yeah, yeah, you can join now. That's it, Dylan Walker, Walker and... Dylan Walker and Jazz Tavanga, the okay. New Age Bushwhackers. There you go. There Love you it. go. <laughs> that thing going on. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they kind of walk like that too. I like it. Moneta, <laughs> hard on our bro. Oh, Three and one. Definitely hard, hard. It's going to be a good game though. Good attacking game. Yeah. Big game coming up. I can't wait, man. It's it's, uh, it's exciting times as a Warriors fan, but you know, still early days in the season. But get on board the revolution. Web, <laughs> Web mania. It's all going on. We're going all the way. <laughs> Warriors. <laughs> On behalf of Money to Sauce, Isaac Sauce, and Daniel. We'll get to the grand final. We will catch you <laughs> next week. Like and subscribe on YouTube and um, Spotify and Apple Podcasts or whatever you, whatever you want to do. Like and subscribe. That's all good. We'll catch you on Facebook, and yeah, we'll see you next week. Peace. Go the Warriors. <laughs>